Professor, I'd like to begin at the beginning. I want to imagine you 10, 8, 10. Can you tell me something about your family, where you are, and a little bit about your parents? No, okay. Okay. That's not... So let's start with my parents. So uh, I had my mother, but she died when I was three years old. So young. Be she was a vi virusologist, is the correct word? Mm -hmm. And she works on the biology of encephalitis while in Moscow. No, she was in Moscow. Yes. Yeah. And she was somehow infected by uh, all these vaccines of uh, vaccines related to encephalitis. Oh, so she died when I was three years old. Your uh, well, and your father? Um, no, no, let's talk to yes. my father. My father was microbiologist. And he was professor of the Institute of Medicine in Moscow. Mm. So, he, uh, and though he was a professor there, so he just died in 1952. Wow. Uh, and before that, he just remarried and I lived big of time, my, much of time with my stepmother. Who was also a scientist? Yes, she was not only a scientist, she was the head of, she was also in medicine and also works on the theory of encephalitis. Mm. And she was the head of big laboratory in Moscow. There was such an institute which was called VM. It means All Union Institute of Experimental Medicine. Oh. And she was the head of laboratory there. I'm going to say this in a funny way, but um, you were a kind of prince of science. I mean, you had a family immersed in science at a very high level. Yeah, it's not the end <laughs> of my talk. Yeah. So, but so my father died when I uh, when I was seventeen years old because of some illness. Yeah. Yeah. Then I was I had also grandfather. My grandfather was a remarkable mathematician, professor of Moscow University. Mm -hmm. And he has many books on mathematics, on geometry, everything. So if you go to Moscow State University, you will find his portrait there. So did he influence you? I mean, I assume he did, but uh, did you have much contact with him? No, we, it was one family, but about contacts, it's difficult question. I shall tell you one story. Please. When I was something like 14 years old, something like this, my father decided that uh, he must teach me mathematics. And he gave me a lecture. You don't know mathematical terminology. Well, but many of your viewers will know it, so. No. So on quaternions. Quaternions is some object very well known in mathematics. So uh, he gave me that one hour lecture about quaternions, read it and said, uh, you never will be a mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So he was not a good prophet. Uh, no, he, was a, he had a big school of mathematician differential geometry. He had his own points of view. So just, I'm telling you the true story. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I hope. You no, know, after that, he never uh, just, uh, just do any mathematics with me. So somebody along the way, I'm guessing, saw that you were a mathematician. How long did it take for somebody to recognize yeah, just I, then I had one uh, half brother. He died last year. Oh. He was also the son of my mother. 
and he was very famous person in nonlinear dynamics, non the fluid dynamics, relativity theory. He was professor of the science also in Moscow State University. Oh. And he was the main person who just uh, believed that I must go to mas in mathematics. And the story was the following, that my father was in biology, so he didn't understand anything in mathematics, <laughs> right? And then when this question about my education just arose, yes. he said that I must go to the Institute of Biology or maybe some other kind of the institute because definitely it will be easier for me to find a job after I just finish. Which a good father should want for his son. Yes, that's what he wants, yeah. But he actually, my father died when I was 17 years old, so really? he did not know anything about my education, my future and all that. Right. But in, in, I, I don't know, of course, uh, the, the Soviet system, but uh, first of all, there's a selection for a kind of academic high school, presumably? Yeah, for academic career. And yes. you, you clearly passed the test, yes? You were in a high school that specialized no, maybe in it, science? It, or no? no, certainly I was not very successful. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, just the, I, I can tell you all the details, so I already mentioned to you that my grandfather was a professor of Moscow University, yes. so there was a first exam in Moscow University, which I failed. <laughs> and was not accepted. But then my grandfather just, or better to say his just students or colleagues, went to see uh, the uh, president of Moscow University, and they told him that uh, independently of the results of my exam, I must be accepted to the university because of my father, my grandfather. Grandfather. Yeah. And it worked. And it worked. After that, I was accepted. I became a student of Moscow University. Which I assume was the best. It was the best university. And certainly it was a dream of all people to be students of that. Right. Place. Now tell me, again, in the course of a university education at Moscow State, um, did you have to choose a, a specialty at the beginning of your education, or did you come to, to find one? And that was the, the story was just the following. In the university, there were different chairs. Mm -hmm. You understand what that yes, is? Yes. Chairs where professors prepared students in different fields. Right. And students can uh, uh, use the chair, can select the chair. The student selects? The student selects okay. the chair. But after that, they became students and start, start to attend lecture courses, all that. And then there are just studies, uh, uh, after graduate studies, where just what, what happens with these people after they graduate from the university. And this is certainly a different story. So which chair did you select? <clears throat> so when I was undergraduate student, yes, exactly. I was, uh, is, uh, my advisor was Kalmagorov. Do you know yes, his name? I know because I've, I've read about your life, uh -huh. yes. So just, I, <laughs> and therefore I decided to become a student of the probability chair where Komagora was the head. And therefore, I just became a student in probability theory. How prepared were you? No, there were some textbooks which I studied, but not much than that. Huh. So really, your deep mathematical education began with him? With Komagora, yes. Yeah, and even some much later. Okay, um, you're, you're an undergraduate when you, you begin to work with him. Yes. I'm guessing he saw your potential. Uh, 
again you are making a mistake. Okay, please correct me. <laughs> the mistake is just the following. The students must write some text for the advisors. Okay. And then uh, I wrote some text related to what I was doing and brought it to Komagorov. Yes. Komagorov looked at this and said, now you can see that you can compete with my other students. Ah. Okay. It means that I was not among the very best. Yes, yes. Uh, but you were capable. Oh, just, I don't know. Nobody told me this at that time. Now, when you say nobody told me that, when I speak to many of the, the laureates, uh, there was somebody who encouraged them and others who just had in their own head the idea that they would do it. It sounds maybe a little bit with you that you were in your own head knowing you could do this. It's not exactly what you said. There were certainly just some fields, some part of mathematics, which I liked. Yes. And there were some fields which I did not like. Okay. And so just if I liked something, I worked on this more than on the other. You followed your curiosity yes. in a way. Um, do you graduate from undergraduate with honors? Again, not exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, we see a pattern. So yeah. tell me what not yes. exactly. So just, there was example in Moscow, students, so all students had to have the exam on social sciences, like the history of the party. Okay. And there was a rule for this exam that there was just some professor in the science history of the party or something, and there was someone from mathematics who just also participated in this exam. Uh, in my case, the other person was Kolmogorov. And so when was this exam? I failed. I, I did not learn it well enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And th there was there were several stories. For example, they asked me some, about some quotation from Lenin, and I just said only one phrase, which I could say that I don't know details, but I remember that Lenin had uh, no that someone had anti-Lenin positions. And this wasn't enough for them. Yeah. So I failed with this exam. But then in our house, in our apartment, my wife found the collection of volumes of Lenin, of Lenin papers, and we found some text related to the speech of this person which I was asked. Yes. And it was written that, that this person took anti-Lenin position, but the, de the details of his speech uh, were lost. Huh. <laughs> so? So, uh, Komagorov went to the head of the <laughs> chair of uh, history of the party and asked them uh, her to give me one more possibility to have this exam. Komagorov was a great scientist. Yes, yes. And so, and this professor was a young, nice woman, so she did not suggest, uh, so she certainly agreed. And it was also a very funny story. You will laugh a lot. Yeah. So it was maybe the second half of September, something like yes. this. In Moscow at that time, it's already rather cold. And then I was studying all just f uh, parts of this st story from just a story about uh, <clears throat> Communist Party. And at the same time, I just trying to see a little bit TV set, the program in TV set. Right. And then there was just a falling fantastic uh, story. 
the person who was just leading this concert said that people uh, in Moscow are very accurate people and it is clear that they are already prepared to call the weather. And some of them have their fur coat, warm clothes right. and all this. And so now just we stop our program and the person who will come to, the, to Moscow University where all is taken, we will receive <laughs> the warmest cl uh, clothes. And so the concert continued. Then after 10, 15 minutes, huge crowd of people right. in far coat, <laughs> in warm things, just entered <laughs> the Moscow University. And uh, therefore everything was stopped. And this was just very nice story. So <laughs> I was studying my history of my Communist Party during this concert, yes. but nevertheless, I just learned something from it. And next day or next two days, I went for the exam and then I <clears throat> uh, passed. It was not the best grade, but no, no, was, but you got through. Yeah, I did. Uh, guess the grade that, which meant, was, that meant you were going to get your degree. No, no, I no. became a gradient student. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. I see. I um, I'm talking to somebody who's about who's one day going to be a world class mathematician. So I need to get him from this situation into. Uh, doctoral study or graduate study. How did this fellow, who's pretty lucky, but doing his hard work, how does he qualify for graduate work? Uh, this is just more or less traditional. It's there are not much things before. So just people who work on some field and uh, then sometimes they write they just first papers for publications and after that they write their thesis right and this becomes their dissertation right usually it is just normal dissertation so they fa they pass and this is the end of graduate studies and you huh? what happened to you mm. Did you do a paper that already showed a new direction? Are you at this point an original mathematician yet? No, this is just again not so simple. Just as I mentioned to you, just I was a student of Komagorov. Right. And Komagorov gave to his student problems to solve. Okay. And I worked together with some friend and Komagorov gave our problem and we solved it. And we sent it for publications and it was published in a good journal. And after that, the paper became just rather well known. And so it's now probably it is 60 or 70 years old. Mm -hmm. But even now there are some references to mm -hmm. this paper. So your your talent is becoming obvious with your abilities in mathematics. Because in every life, you know, a career builds or doesn't build, you get to the next stage or you don't. And you sometimes earlier through intervention, but nevertheless, now, uh, presumably, you're going to be involved in a faculty at a high level of mathematics. Not yet? Not yet. Well, it's not straight line. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but you can tell me the line, even if it's zigzag. I, I want to know how the next stage happened. No, just... So after just people were accepted for graduate uh, studies, they uh, supposed to have several exams. And there were three exams. And 
I had only some problems with the exam on just theory of the party, but with other uh, just parts, I didn't have any problems. The real mathematical work. Yeah, it, it was mathematics, it was foreign language. Yeah, and I don't remember that I had some problem. Well, I was, it was not something very outstanding or something, but no, it no. was not... It, but it allowed it was, you to move forward. Yeah, it was rather simple. Um, I've spoken in this series of interviews to maybe five or six people who were educated in the Soviet mathematical uh, style. Um, and I remember some of them speaking of a very great difference between the kind of mathematical education and inquiry in Moscow and in Leningrad. Do you remember that the, the, the Moscow school, the uh, approach, had a distinctive orientation? No, I don't agree with this. I okay. even have opposite point of view. Okay, just, tell me. So I work in some field and Leningrad University has a big group of mathematicians and seminars working in this field. Ah. And there was interval of time when people from both places used to come to another place to give talks. Okay. So I cannot say that Moscow mathematics was much better than just uh, Leningrad. Well, they didn't it. say better. They said different styles of, of uh, questions asked. Uh, yeah, that was possible. So, yeah. Um, so, in choosing, just because it's a big life and we want to move through through your important life, um, at some point you have to make a dissertation, presumably yeah. in in the uh, graduate faculty. How do you choose? Um, what direction to go for the dissertation? So at that time, there was just a remarkable event which has happened. I don't tell, tell you just the details, much much mm -hmm. details, but I want to say that Komagorov made a great discovery okay. in the field in which I worked. And so after that, I decided that I shall work in this field. And my dissertation was uh, exactly consist of results uh, just directed to this field. Is it a field in probability? What is the, the context? It is a field in ergodic theory. I don't know. Okay. Do you know this word? Yes, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, soon, I think soon after this, your name becomes associated with his name. With his name of Komagoro. Yes. Yeah. What was that principle? That is, this is another story. <laughs> the story was the following. Yes. That <laughs> so Komagoro made his discovery. Yes. And just went to Paris, where he spent maybe half of a year, and returned back to Moscow. And then another mathematician found a gap in Komagorov's paper. Wow. And this gap could not be just removed by s s small just steps. It, it needed m more effort. And since I started to work in this field, I started to work on attempt how to improve, uh, to, to, to change this field, uh, this era. Right. And this is what I did. And therefore, there appeared the word entropy of Komagor of Sinai. This probably you had this. Yeah, because first discovery was done by Komagor, right. but I somehow oh, just made small, just Correction. Okay. What age are you at the point? Because at this point, your name begins to be known in the field. No, not so no. quickly. Not That's so quickly. quickly. It took some time. Okay. But you you get a position at the university. Um, because do you go to faculty 
from from graduate work? Uh, no, again, it was not yeah, so. <laughs> it's your story. I want to know. Yeah, just uh, after that, there were just a couple of years when I was Moscow State University, but I did not have a position of full professor. Okay. I was teaching all that, and at that time I already liked physics. And I decided to go to the Physics Institute. Yeah. And I became a professor of physics in this Institute of Physics. But the president of Moscow University at that time was Petrovsky. I'm quite sure that you heard his name. So, and Petrovsky just uh, insisted that I have some position in the university, mm -hmm. so I just became half professor in Moscow University. So you had a joint, joint appointment. appointment, and yes. then also in Landau Institute. Um, again, we understand you're speaking to a layman, but what is your work developing at this point? What are the problems that are interesting? And just as since there was already the process of big growth of entropy, I worked most of the time on the theory of entropy. And did you make a major contribution to that field? No. I mean, I, I would not say major, but big contribution, yes. Okay. Um, now I'm going to ask, I must, but you can dismiss it, it's not interesting to you, the political situation of the time as it affected a professor. Um, I know early on you had to pass the political exam. You you told us um, about that process. But as a professor, are you affected at all by the political situation? And for the first time, I bring this in, being Jewish, because a lot of your colleagues um, that I've spoken to were affected. Yeah. Simply because they were Jewish, was this true in your in your life at all? Yeah. So this uh, also had some influence on my life. Okay. And the influence was the following: that I mentioned to you that I was just I had some position in Moscow University, but it wasn't professor position. I could teach there, but I did not have just full position there. And then, when was it? it? I think it was maybe in beginning of the 50, and only in the beginning of the 70 or 80, mm -hmm. I think. Well, we can find it if yeah. you want. I became full professor. And what was the, what happened to allow that to happen? Because that I was, part, did you hear about the letter of 100 mathematicians about the Senian work? Tell me. Did you hear? No. No, just you can find the, the history. So there were 100 or maybe more than 100 mathematicians who signed the letter of support for another mathematician, the Senian Wolpen, and I was among them. Ah, and that was a dangerous thing to do. And then people who did this uh, could not have just any, just uh, any, just uh, corresponding scientific uh, just position. So that the, you were people who signed this were punished, punished yes. for having done it. But this is not necessarily ethnic prejudice. This is because you supported dissidents. Yeah, but in the, in the group of people who signed this letter, the majority were Jews. Ah, so it and this was noticed. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> so how did this affect, for example, because I know now, having spoken to so many mathematicians, uh, so be it and otherwise, that uh, it's so important to be involved in conferences, to encounter mathematicians elsewhere? Were, were your travels restricted? Yes, certainly, as everybody else. Not so many people could travel, and I started to travel 
When was it? It maybe it was already in the 80s, something yeah. like this. Some of your colleagues in mathematics um, moved at the first opportunity after the end of the Soviet Union outside, not always to the United States, to France, many places. You stayed. Uh, no, I just simply moved to other places a little bit later. Well, in the 90s, but I, yeah. that, I'm, I'm not saying that there's one time that's right to go or not to go, but I'm assuming that you felt able to pursue intellectual work uh, while remaining there, that it was not necessary to leave in order to do the work you wanted to do. I'm very sorry, but again, I should not agree with you. <laughs> I, I, I ask only to find out. Yeah. That, so I don't have one position. Please tell me. So just, uh, the, there was just the following story. So uh, in Moscow, our, just in our family was my wife and my son. But also the wife of, no, the mother of my wife was some uh, no lived with us. Yes. Yeah. And so the, we could not go away from Moscow. Okay. When some of our relatives were there Makes without sense, any course. just substantial support. Right. And we waited until they died. They died in ninety one. Okay. And after that, we yeah. moved. It's a personal Princeton. reason. Yeah, yes. personal yes. reason. After uh, that, we makes sense. moved course. to Princeton. Staying there, again, it's a question, not a statement for me. After the changes, I assume your ability to contact the outside world, to be in a mathematical exchanges, was much easier. Yeah, there were many more conferences in which I could participate. And there was no issue about whether you could travel or not at this point? No, well, you see, just <coughs> I must tell you a big number of details. Yes. So there was uh, the Landau Institute of Theoretical Physics. I don't know, did you hear about it? Yes, and I know you're still associated with it. Yeah, I am yeah. still associated, yeah. but Please. it was the best institute in the Soviet Union. Yes. The director of this institute, Professor Halatnikov, who was a student of Landau, was a great, honest person. Mm. And he organized the system so that the rule was the following, that every member of the institute during one year could spend one week at a conference mm -hmm. and one month at some other institute. Ah, around the world. Around the world. So this is what, this is the description of how the system worked. Well, now I'm going to ask the other side of the question about why did you wait so long to leave? Why did you leave at all? No, that's... We lived our we lived after the fact that we did not have any relatives. I understand what that that kept you there, but if you were now able to be at such an important institute, able to travel, even required to in a way as part of your mathematical development, why leave Moscow? Uh, you're at a great. Even no, but I just explained to you, we could not leave Moscow before we had relatives. No, but then why leave at all, is what I'm asking. Well, once, that, once it was not No, but practically, practically all, um, all mm, Russian mathematician left at that yes. time. Yes, so and I, I want to know why. Oh, there were just many, just many answers to this question. First of all, uh, I mentioned to you that at that time there was Communist Party, which still exists, and everything what was done there was done after uh, the ruling of Communist Party. Right. Without its permission, right. people could not go. Yeah. In the earlier years, but in the 90s. Also, so we, also we left. 
you know, maybe not exactly in the 90s, but the end of the 80s, it was also so. There was still restrictions. Yes. I see. Okay. Um, you came when you, uh, when you left Moscow, you came here to Princeton, I think. Yes. Yes. Um, what kind of department was it in terms of the questions that interested you? Um, what, what particularly appealed to you about the Princeton faculty and math? Oh, that's, it's a very easy question. Mm, first of all, I knew many mm, scientists here, okay. with whom I had various types of contacts. So just, I knew in advance what I shall work, uh, what I shall work when I come here, even with whom I can work. Mm -hmm. So for me, this transition from Moscow to Princeton was, was not so dramatic. Right, right. It was mostly the nature of colleagues. And, and yeah, it is just the this, this situation which happens with many people. That it's colleagues, science, literature, students, all that. Right. Again, a big question, if, if it interests you, if not, we go on, and that is, once you came here, and here you are, um, in terms of the way mathematics is taught, were you seeing differences in the American system and the system that had produced you? Well, there is some difference. It's not exactly the same, but nevertheless, it is easier to be adjusted to it. So the differences are not, were not significant. No, I shall tell you the story. Please. I, uh, you probably know what does it mean, the number E in mathematics. You know this? Yeah, you know. And yeah, yeah. you also know. Yeah. So just, <laughs> I just gave lecture course, <clears throat> and then I just noticed that one girl, she was a student, does not know what does it mean, the number E? Mm -hmm. E is just a central number. It's without E, it has, mathematics doesn't exist. And I started to ask you, how did it happen that you know what does it mean, E? Well, she said, it's very easy. Last year, um, we just studied the number E. And professor used to come to our class every week and explain and, and, uh, and explained what does it mean, the number E. And at that time, we knew what is the number E. But now nobody comes to our class, so we don't know what is number E. <laughs> this is not a happy story. It, it's not what? It's not a happy story in terms of intellectual development. This is rather funny. She certainly just after some time she learns this, but it's something what could not happen in Russia, for example, okay. and in Europe also. Right. Um, having moved to Princeton, what is the principal direction of your work? No, I just worked again, continued to work in, in the theory of dynamical systems, and then just probability theory, just ergodic theory, mathematical physics. Maybe this is enough. <laughs> no, but I, I also your work in time becomes connected to the awards. You've received many awards. Um, but for example, the Abel Prize, was it given for what insight? No, just, I don't understand your question. Abel Prize is given to different people each year. Yeah. So just... But you received one. Yeah, I received this prize. You must prize. have achieved something to receive it. The Abel Prize is not given to people on the street. It's given for distinguished work. Yes, certainly this is true, but at that time I had some number of results, so... So it was... It in was the summit, it was work. just deserved. No one prize. particular insight was cited? No, there were, yeah, this is two technical questions. There were some uh, Some of your audience will, are mathematicians who, but it's up to you. It, no, it's, it's not interesting yeah. to talk about, that's fine. Um, I'm interested in the extent to which 
you enjoy and even feel necessary? You and? I, it, the question of you as a teacher is where I'm going. Mm -hmm. So I have talked to some mathematicians in this series who enjoy the isolation of being in an institute, having no students, uh, just being allowed to think. Mm. That was their preference. No, it's not my case. It's not your case. Okay, because I know you have many distinguished students. And so yeah, I have just big seminars to which many students come. And what is the interchange in terms of the development of your work? Is it work that is helped by being a teacher of the students? Is it quite separate, the work that you do yourself from the, the kinds of problems your students do? I'm just interested in the intellectual exchange. No, there was no exchange. It was some kind of process how everything worked. So. There, were, there was a seminar, there were students which attended to the seminar, and each student worked on his or her problems, which were discussed on the seminar. So there was no competition, no isolation. Okay. So it was some kind of common work. Common work. Okay. Um, I'm also interested, again, uh, tell me if it interests you as well. The idea outside of mathematics is that mathematics particularly values and assumes that many insights come to the young, the young, the woman, the young mathematician. In many other fields, the assumption is it's not for years in the field before people develop the salient insights that develop their uh, reputation. Do you think this is true, that, that, that there is a a peak time of inquiry? I mean, the field medal is always referred to as odd in the broad uh, world of mathematics, of, 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 of intellectual work, because it has to cut off at 40. Uh, in my field in history, the idea of cutting off at 40 for a great prize is unthinkable. So what do you think about that, the idea of when, when insight comes most easily to the mathematics? No, I don't. I don't agree with what you are saying because there are so many seminars, so many contacts, and people have so many possibilities to just find new ideas, new fields for... We cannot go over all your work, although you have done 250 articles, you have so, so much. So obviously we can't really... No, but it, it, it probably it's not required for you to... <laughs> yes, because, as I say, young mathematicians will be interested in this. But we, we, we can't do it all the time. But there are certain um, premises, theories, that um, are associated with your name. Uh, not just the earlier one, when, when it was a joint name. Uh, something called, I think if you got it right, for example, Sign as random walk, just as an instance of the kinds of insights you have had. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, certainly, <laughs> I can, and I would laugh. But so, do you know what does it mean, brown in motion? No. I don't. But no. Okay. So. Uh, I, so I had mother-in-law, and in our just um, apartments there were many books, and there was book which was called Random Series, okay. and she said in her opinion Random Series is when the soldiers go in different di in, in different directions. So, random walk, it is just something like this. It just oh. when, when something goes in various directions with different speed. Well, no, I understand. And so, you work this out in mathematical terms, this, yeah, yeah. this phenomenon. Yes. Thank you very much.